This is TK Coleman, and you're listening to TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about individual rights and questioning authority. Let's dive right in with the first tweet. The question is not who likes you. The question is who's committed to respecting your individual rights, even when they don't like you. Liking you doesn't always translate to respecting you. And even if it did, no one is going to like you all the time. There are so many discussions, so many debates around which politician likes us more, which group of people likes us more. What does that person over there think of me? Not only is this a relatively vain conversation to have because you're talking about something that you have very little control over. Who people like or who they don't like is based on so many fluctuating variables, much of which has nothing to do with you. But it misses the point because the concept of liking you means absolutely nothing if it is uncoupled from how people actually treat you. If you are analyzing politicians or you are analyzing people for uh, friendships or business partnerships or romantic relationships, you have to have the ability to separate rhetoric from results. There are so many people in this world who are great at using the rhetoric of compassion, the rhetoric of generosity, the rhetoric of loyalty, the rhetoric of love, the rhetoric of hard work, the rhetoric of everything. But when you are running a company, for instance, and you are interviewing someone for a job, it is that other person's job to try to impress you with their rhetoric, to tell you rhetoric that talks about the value they can create for you, rhetoric about how different they are, how creative they are. And your job is to try to look past the rhetoric to see evidence of their ability to create results. In economics, we call this stated preference versus revealed preference. What people say they want, what people say they will do is different from what they actually want and what they actually will do. And this isn't always because of blatant dishonesty. The incentives that govern speech are very different than the incentives that govern the sacrifices involved in making choices in the real world. You see, it doesn't really cost anything to say, yeah, I would buy your book. Yeah, I would be there for you. Yeah, I would attend your party. Yeah, I'll come over to your home and help you move or whatever it may be. It doesn't really cost much to just say things like that. But to actually do those things, to actually fulfill promises, it requires a level of sacrifice that is a lot more intense. And so many people say things and they genuinely mean it. They genuinely believe themselves when they say it. But when it comes time to produce, they have to deal with scarcity in a way that even surprises them. And so when you're evaluating relationships, don't just evaluate people based on rhetoric, evaluate people based on results. So if someone says, but I like you, I like you, you're my favorite person, ask yourself, what does that mean for you? Is that person going to show up for you in any kind of way? Is that person going to really do something for you? Is that person going to really help you out and make your life easier or better? Or are they just looking to exploit you by getting you to invest in them or make sacrifices for them out of a mere response to kind sounding words spoken on your behalf? What you want out of life is not for people to say they like you or to act like they like you. What you want out of life are people who will treat you with respect and who will honor your individual rights even when they don't like you. You wanna know why this is super important? Because number one, it's possible for people to like you and still not treat you with respect. Number two, even if someone does like you, they're not gonna like you forever and all the time. Talk to people who have to live with each other. Talk to family members, talk to parents, talk to children, talk to married couples, talk to business partners, talk to roommates. There are no two human beings who like each other all the time. We all have moments in life where we are a little irritated with each other, a little inconvenienced by one another, a little off put by one another. And what makes us people of integrity is our willingness to show up 
and do the right thing even when we don't feel like, oh, you're so pleasant to be around. Oh, you're so fun to be around. I don't want people who are only good to me when they feel the right kinds of emotions because emotions and ethics are two different things. Having the right mood is not the same thing as having the right morality. Instead of going around, involving yourself in debates that are aimed at determining who likes you the most, focus on your individual rights and ask yourself who is fighting for those things, even if they don't like me. Some of the meanest people I have ever met in my life are the same people that will be the first to come through for you if you're in a bad situation and you need help. And some of the people that go around smiling all the time, they're very accessible, they're very nice sounding, are the very people that will completely flake you out if you really need something. Liking you or respect and respecting you are two different things. Seek the people that will show you respect and more importantly than just some abstract, vague notion of respect. People that will respect your individual rights, your right to think for yourself, your right to choose for yourself, your right to create your own destiny, your right to make your own mistakes, your right to find out what your life can become if you are the one in the driver's seat deciding where you will work, what you will do, what you will eat, who you will be friends with, and so on. Anybody that can't respect your freedom, your creative power as an individual, doesn't matter how much they like you because their actions are equivalent to hate. Let's go to tweet number two. For any debate, you can find an authority figure or expert who tells you exactly what you want to hear. There's no, there's no way around the implication. You must do your own research, think for yourself, and take responsibility for the conclusions and choices you make. I can't tell you how many debates I hear where people hide behind experts. They hide behind credentials. And they say, oh, but this person who has uh, a few letters behind their name, they said this. Here's the problem with that. I'm gonna give you two problems with that. Number one, I don't care what the topic is. I can easily find someone who has letters behind their name that's willing to say the opposite of what the expert you're trusting says. That's every debate. No matter what the topic is, there is always someone with letters behind their name who disagree and who can support whatever it is you want them to support. So if you're basing your beliefs on the amount of letters behind someone's name, the amount of credentials that someone has, then you're already misguided. But here's the second part. For those who think, oh, TK, you're just downplaying credentials or you're just disrespecting the time and effort that it takes for people to acquire expertise and you're treating yourself as if you are equal to an engineer or a scientist or a doctor or whatever it may be. Here's what I have to say to that. As much as we might like to think that we are capable of outsourcing our judgment to experts, the reality is it all starts with you. It all starts with you. Who is the expert that tells you what expert to listen to? The answer has always been the same, my friends, you. The decision to place your faith in the words of an expert is an affirmation of your own judgment. You cannot place your faith in some expert unless you presuppose from the outset that you as an individual are capable of making good decisions about who to trust that you as an individual are capable of making rational decisions about who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't, that you as an individual have enough sound judgment to be able to decide who is capable of guiding your life. Even when you trust another, your trust in them is only an extension of the trust that you are exercising in yourself. And so the responsibility always comes back to you. You are responsible for the people that you trust. You are responsible for the decisions that you make to place your life, your well-being, your future, your dreams, your destiny, your health, your ideas in the hands of another person. It's okay to evaluate what experts have to say. It's okay to listen to both sides of the argument. It's okay to you know, consider the fact that they may have study these things longer than you, and they may know things that you don't know, but you gotta remember, those experts don't have to live your life. 
And if you act on something that an expert says, there's going to be no refund for the regret you feel if what they said doesn't work. And if you come back to those experts saying, I followed your advice and it ruined my life, they're going to remind you what I'm trying to tell you now, that you are responsible for the choices that you make. So whatever you do, don't give up ownership. If you want to let other people make decisions for you and tell you what to think, that's up to you. But understand that that is a choice you are making and that choice you are making is based on the faith you are having in your own judgment. No way around it. No way around it. Folks, I know it's hard. I know it takes time. I know we're all busy with different things, but do whatever you have to do to put yourself in a position where you are able to do your own research about the things that are important to you. We don't all have the time to become experts on every topic, but it is also true that every topic is not equally important in your life. But if you're going to make major decisions about your money, about your health, about your children, or anything that's critical, anything that you would truly regret if it didn't work out, take the time necessary to study both sides and give yourself the best chance that you have to make a good decision because you're the one you're the one that has to live with your choice none of the experts will that my friends is today's rant on individual rights and questioning authority when someone tells you that they like you focus on whether or not they respect you when someone uses the rhetoric of compassion make sure that they are producing results that align with that rhetoric and when it comes to to authority never outsource the responsibility for the process of making decisions. Own your choices, own your thoughts, own your ideas, own your own duty to self to research the things that are important to you. All right, if you're listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe. Also leave a comment. If you're watching on YouTube or social media, please leave a comment, share with a family member or friend that you think might benefit from hearing these rants. And also don't hesitate to let me know if there's something you'd like to hear me talk about in the future. Thanks for tuning in and keep doing the best that you can to live fully and freely in every area of life. Peace out.